Hi, my name is Rianne Gawal, I'm a physician associate working part-time in primary care and part-time in academia. And for anyone that's interested in academia, I thought I'd share a little bit about my journey into it. Um, I didn't have a lot of kind of formal teaching experience prior to entering academia. So my background is that I qualified with a biomedical science degree in 2009, spent a couple of years working as a healthcare assistant and helping run a group for young people with learning disabilities whilst figuring out what I wanted to do in life. Um, came across the PA course, travelled down to London and then qualified from St George's in London in 2013. I then worked in primary care since then um, at a practice, lovely practice in Skipton. And whilst I was there, I really enjoyed, you know, GP and seeing patients. But five days a week of doing the same thing day in and day out was starting to get quite difficult and quite draining. And round about a year and a half later, I kind of thought it would be really nice to just break up my week and do something different but there wasn't really anything out there and I didn't know what something different would look like. Um, and so interestingly, one day I was delivering a talk about what I do day to day in my clinical role. And at that talk was someone from Sheffield Hallam um, who happened to mention that they were starting their course later in the year and would I be interested in perhaps getting involved, which worked really well for me because I quite wanted to move back to Sheffield again. Um, and so, yeah, really liked the fact that Sheffield Hallam wasn't a medical school and that it was a bespoke course for PAs um, with a really small course team. So whilst I hadn't expected to get involved with teaching during my career, it all sounded quite attractive to me. I think my big tip for anyone that's interested in academia would be, as with any job, think about whether you actually want to work with them. Don't take the first opportunity that you're offered. But for me, that worked really well. And since 2015, I've been with Sheffield Hallam. Initially, I joined them as what's called an associate lecturer, which basically means that you're paid for doing things ad hoc, but you don't have a permanent contract. So for me, that meant co-module leading, teaching on days where I could do that, but otherwise bringing other people in either from the university or outside of the university. That at the time meant a lot of educating people about what a PA student and what a PA looked like, because in this region, they didn't really have PAs. Um, placement visits, liaising with placements around, again, what a PA student needs to achieve on those placements, interviewing prospective PA students, and then writing some of the course content from scratch, so lectures, OSCEs, SBAs, all of that. I then applied for my role in 2017, so that was a senior lecturer role two days a week and was lucky enough to get that. And I guess by then I'd had kind of some teaching experience really to draw on. Prior to um, my associate lecturing, I'd only really done some ad hoc stuff. So a little bit of ad hoc marking that I'd done for St. George's students. I'd been involved on an unpaid basis to do some work with modifying the matrix. My job description hasn't changed too much. I'm probably module leading a little bit more doing a lot of decision making with the PA course lead in terms of, you know, how to change the course, because we constantly reflect on how can we do things better. Um, I've never applied for an academic post, so that was all fairly new to me. So the usual kind of submitting a CV and covering letter. I then had an interview, so for me that was kind of a one-to-one -one panel with a few people at the university, but also involved a micro-teach, so that meant doing 10 minutes where I delivered a teaching session. And I think a big tip for me would be to anyone in that position, try and pick a really simple topic that you can teach well, so you're not there to show off how much you know, you're there to show how well you can teach, and often being simple is probably going to be more effective for that. Joining as a senior lecturer had the advantage of me being a permanent member of staff, so I was encouraged to do things to develop my career as an academic. 
one of those things that was really helpful was doing my PG cert in medical education. And um, so whilst I funded it myself, it was definitely supported by the university and definitely really, really helpful for me in terms of growing as an educator. I think it dawned on me um, whilst I was doing that qualification that just because we do those skills in terms of like the stuff that you teach the PA students, it doesn't necessarily mean that you know how to teach the skill. And so actually learning how to teach things obviously is really important for becoming a teacher. Um, and it makes you reflect on things that so gives you the time and space to reflect on, you know, what is the role of the teacher and how you can improve things such as the delivery of your content, time management, um, and just generally, you know, what are you hoping to achieve by the out by the end of that teaching session? There's a really great paper by Peter Kugel called How Professors Develop as Teachers, and that really resonated with me from my initial teaching style in 2016, which is quite different to how I teach now. I think generally it's a pretty rewarding job when it goes well. So for me, you know, some of my former students are in leadership roles in this region. So PA ambassadors, preceptorship scheme leads. And that's really fantastic to see their progression. But it also means that you get to know who's who. You know, you've got those relationships already established. And it opens up opportunities for you in terms of further study, professorship lead roles within a university, as well as a little bit of flexibility in working from home, because obviously that's really difficult when you're working clinically. You know, it's pretty much unheard of working from home, isn't it? Um, I think the biggest challenge for me is when students are failing. So when students don't pass assessments, all of that's really tough because there's such difficult conversations to have with people. You know, you assume their insight into their situation matches your own. And obviously, they're pretty devastated by the fact that they can't continue with the course that they've invested time and money into. Having said that, I think from a professional development perspective, dealing with those complaints and the feedback and with students who are failing generally does make you reflect on yourself as an educator and and just helps you in terms of your professional development as a PA more generally. I don't think there's an easy solution to that one, but I think you need to know that it's it comes with part of the job unless you're an associate lecturer where you're maybe dipping in and just doing the teaching. It's also a really hard job to do part-time in a dual role because whilst you might have set working days, your students are full-time. So having a supportive course team that understand that is going to be really helpful for you as well as developing your own time management and organisational skills on your set working days. I think overall it's a really rewarding job and I think for me it's always going to give you transferable skills so even though you might dip your toe into academia and think like me I'll see where it takes me not quite sure if it's want to do what I want to do long term you're always going to learn something that's going to benefit you for your career in general and um, so overall I definitely recommend it thank you very much for listening